everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Renf, and that was Josh Cook on piano. Hey, Josh, you're uh, going to be over there a couple times, so you yeah. said you wanted to have more of a Colbert kind of feel to it, where you just kind of yeah, switch back. Yeah, you know, like the, the side band thing. Yeah. Except I'm like a one-man band. Yeah. You know. So what did you bring today? Okay, uh, today I brought my pocket operators uh, made by a place called Teenage Engineering. They're little miniature synths. They look like calculators. And they have screens that kind of look like those old-fashioned gaming watches, you know? Nice. From like, late 70s. Um, and they're just, like, little synthesizers. Cool. We'll have a couple of those uh, playing throughout this uh, episode as well. So we'll throw it to you a couple times. Thanks. All right. All right, let's talk about some things we're going to be talking about uh, today on The Morning Show. Uh, like I said, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm going to talk about some um, news stuff, some weather stuff, some city council stuff. A lot of public comment is all about those plastic bags, trying to get rid of them. Um, we also have a highlight reel of Dude I Just Drew episode 10. Yes, they are on 10 episodes right now. If you are interested in being a part of that, you can message them through their Facebook page and YouTube channel, Dude I Just Drew. All right, let's throw it over to a little bit of weather. It's uh, 40 degrees out currently. That's not the weather, but this That's is the me. weather. Uh, I'm it's sunny. <laughs> it's 40 degrees outside. It's not going to be weather. It's not going to be sunny today. It's going to be uh, most. It's going to be uh, have 100 percent chances of showers happening today. It wasn't really raining this morning. It was damp. It was damp. I but was, it was. It, it looked like it was going to be raining when I went out of the house. But yeah. But your Thursday, it's going to be a high of 64 degrees outside. Woo. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be nice. By Thursday night and Friday, you're going to have more rain. So pretty much uh, if you're planning on doing anything, Thursday's the time to do it. And it is usually early out for a lot of those kids out there. So it's a perfect day to get out and about right after school. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be like perfect sweater weather. Because as soon as it gets too hot, you get all like, you have to wear like short sleeves and yeah. uh, small clothes and all well, that I'm stuff. I'm ready for that. I've got all my stuff ready. I got I got my, my Game Boy t-shirt and some like workout running clothes. Nice. But if it's going to keep raining, then... Can't use it yet. Yeah. Got to plan accordingly. Yeah. Do you have running gear yet? No. No? No. Huh. I'm not a runner. Well, we should go on a run sometime. We'll, like, <laughs> run up one of those <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's the sound I'll make. No, I feel you. I only <laughs> run at night anyway. Yep. All right. Let's talk about some news items. Did you hear about that, uh, uh, the old uh, um, Notre Dame? I did hear about that. That sucks. Yeah, Notre Dame caught fire money, and hundreds of firefighters were able to contain it. Uh, it's a 850-year-old uh, cathedral. It was built in um, 12th century to replace a smaller cathedral back in the day, and it was in orders of King Louis the Seventh. Ah, uh, Louis. Yep. Um, did they ever find a cause for that? No, I, I don't believe so. It, it was uh, basically it started in the attic. Okay. It, it burned uh, primarily the the majority of the roof, mm. like like I think it was like eighty seventy five to eighty percent of the roof was completely burned. Anything that was pretty much made of wood burned down. So if you get a if you want to take a quick look, here's a kind of example of the fire. One of the major things that did fall is one of the spires that was built in the late nineteenth century, as you can see. And of course, ma most of the interior was completely decimated comparatively to the uh, more of that uh, representation of you know, like the stones and the, the, the building, the hard uh, materials that made up the structure pretty much stayed intact. So it, a lot of the paintings, a lot of the yeah. old scriptures and a lot of stuff that was in there is, are completely gone forever. Yeah. I saw a similar situation in Japan when an earthquake took out one of their historic castles and they just went right back to rebuilding it. You know, earthquake proof. Hopefully, if they rebuild this, quick enough i hope they make it fireproof yeah so uh, smart well, thing to do. Well, you know thankfully uh the facade does remain intact and many treasures are lost forever unfortunately That's americans right. have been the biggest contributors from abroad to donate millions and millions of dollars to uh um these folks, according to Ann Monier, a doctoral candidate and the author of a forthcoming book about American fundraising groups for French preservation. Um, some of the uh, articles, you probably can read this pretty much anywhere at any time, but this is such a huge deal because it's been around for so long. It survived World War II. It was like a central hub for a lot of uh, allies to regain uh, um, Paris, France during yeah. that time. So all roads lead to that cathedral, too. 
That was one of the big things about that. Uh, it was like the center point of France, pretty yeah, much. Everybody is equally close to God. That's the the geometry of faith, yeah. kind of like in uh, uh, Age of Ultron. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a line. Yeah, that was a line. <laughs> I just watched it recently. I know, like... It's probably just residual effects. <laughs> yeah, and um, uh, Neil uh, has a tendency to um, base history uh, based on uh, The Dark Knight, where in Roman oh. times... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, okay, I knew that before Age of Ultron, but... <laughs> I, I do find that an interesting yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like a lot of times, pe- like a lot of countries and a lot of towns, they wanted to be like faith is the center of a person, and so yeah. we want to put it in the center of town so everyone can come to town. Yeah, the whole like city is kind of built around the faith. Yeah. You know, it's very poetic. Yeah. And, of course, in here in America, we've been dealing with a uh, measles outbreak. Um, CDC came out with the first uh, uh, number of, of 2019. It's 555 cases of measles have been reported in the first quarter of the new year. And it's basically 50% more of the total 2018 cases. That's like over the whole year of 2018, and we're still in 2019. That was just the first quarter. And most of the cases are on the East Coast, um, New York, New Jersey, a lot of those places. Um, high population. High populated areas. Am it, I allowed to speak a pin and just like a quick... Well, I just want to say this last thing before I okay. throw it over to you about getting vaccinated. Yeah. Because it's important to get vaccinated because officials say uh, get vaccinated because some officials are saying you don't just get vaccinated for yourself, but do it for those around you. Okay. Go ahead. Vaccines only work if everybody uses them. And, like, okay, one guy, like, 10 years ago posted, and he was, like, defamed as a scientist. Like, he used to be a doctor, and then he was thrown out of the community because he was insane. He's the guy who started the whole, like, vaccines cause autism thing. Um, It was just one guy. And a bunch of people chose to follow that one guy. That guy was stupid. Yeah. Vaccinate your children, please. Yep. And, uh, I mean, this is, you know, America is not the only one suffering from the measles. It's g- getting every surgeon throughout the whole entire world in general. Well, that, well that's the thing. Um, throughout the world, it's resurging. Um, but, like, it doesn't have to be here. Yeah, and, like, and, and in CDC, they did a lot of reports saying that uh, measles were pretty much um, done-so at, the, at a certain point. But then it, it, it made sense. It used quite to be at an all-time low. Yeah. And then the whole anti-vaxxer movement started and a bunch of parents became foolish and um, thought that their kids would be, like, special and safe. But you're you're actually making them far less safe and you're making everybody around them less safe. That's why schools have policies. And I I think it's ridiculous when people get mad about those policies. They're like, why should my kid be vaccinated? Because in one case, it's a liability. If if your kid spreads the measles to other kids, it's basically... Um, the school's fault for uh, you yeah. know it's and the school fa- it's the school's fault re- regardless of any situation. And, and most of these parents are not scientists, and uh, essential oils do not cure the measles. DoTerra ain't gonna save you. Yep. All right, let's move on. Yeah. Um, I think that was a, a good little sign out. Oh that, yeah, but I, like, you, you know. I, I know that. I was I was expecting I'm you to mad. say something. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, speaking of uh, hot topics uh, here in Missoula, the mercantile was a huge hot topic back in the day. They finished the hotel. Me and Neil were walking down the street the other day, and we noticed the guy standing outside the building. He was well dressed, and it's like, what is that? What is that guy doing? Apparently, it was open. I didn't hear about it. Uh, but the, 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 that's not the news. That's not that's the news. <laughs> the news is that they're actually the same company is looking to build on the uh, what's that called the. Uh, I want to look at my notes real quick. It's called the uh, Firestone Building, which has usually been used for like mechanic work, and they also had a couple of the 406 stores there in the corner. It's basically, you know, where the mercantile is, and yeah. then it's like on the kitty corner on the other side, across from that new bre- uh, across from that new brewery that just opened up by uh, Union Hall, and that t- particular corner of Patty and Front Street, or Patty and Main. Sorry, Patty really and Main. Bad at- Geographical yeah, locations, but, but it's, I kind of get the it's, the it's the gist of it. It's probably like down the street from the Epinata joint. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the Firestone building, the, it has not been in use. Um, according to MRA, it really hasn't had it a permanent residence for over a century. Really? So then they're looking to basically tear down a lot of this building. And the, the big thing is that they're asking for money from the city, tax in- increment finance, which is a kind of like a big kind of like hot topic here in the city of Missoula. MRA's Ellen Buchanan says that the Missoula's 
only way of getting rid of blight and also helping um, uh, deconstruct rather than um, just demolish. Deconstruction is a process that Missoula has really liked to do in terms of recycling a lot of the old material that they take from the demolished building. So deconstruction. Yeah. And the money would improve public right away, while at the same time get rid of, getting rid of a, a building that has not been in use by any permanent basis. Uh, so when the hotel, it's another hotel, uh, is finished, uh, Buchanan said that the Front Street Urban Renewal District will be seeing the full property tax value from the new mercanti mercantile resident in the, the Rome Student Housing and the luxury Lavender Street Town homes nearby. So right. it's uh, one of the things that uh, basically all these urban renewal districts kind of start, uh, was formed in back in 2007. And are expected to last until 2044 unless new bonds are sold and they extend it here and there. And so far, they, the value of these uh, went from $1.4 million to $1.9 million in the last 12 years. And so it's going to be a hotel? Yep, it's going to be another hotel, nice. uh, another like 200 room hotel right now. The uh, current uh, mercantile uh, hotel is, um, I believe it's like 152 rooms that they rent out. It's, it's like Hotel Marriott, so they open their main floor for businesses and restaurants and other things. It's good as for well. tourism. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We have a. Uh, for expansion of business. Yeah, it's uh, just uh, we like the, the one of the biggest reasons why the city is moving this TIF funds in there is to basically kind of make a city um, that looks good. It's just yeah. it's a, it's you know it's like it's I, I, I like vanity isn't bad all the time. Sometimes you want places that look good. So this company is out of uh, Bozeman and they're looking to uh, um, expand their kind of businesses to the other side of the corner. Good idea. Yeah. So that's what's going on with your news today. Uh, we spent a little more time on the news than we, <laughs> than we did, so we're going to throw it to uh, some new clips, and this is from the highlight reel of Dude I Just Drew, episode 10, that we just uh, did last weekend. So here it is. Hey, welcome back to another Dude I Just Drew, episode 10. two-digit mark and we're getting ever closer to that season finale um, and today we have uh, Will Fristo Hello. as a guest um, and me Ron Lemus <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the rules for a second um, as always uh, you get five minutes to draw five drawings uh, we do a coin, coin, coin toss to <laughs> to uh, choose who goes first. And then we judge them at the end. Yes, thank you, Graham. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then we and then we have judges over here at the end, and then we pick it from a hat. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, nice dude. It's a fork. With night. He's being night. He's a night dude. I can't. <laughs> I'm about to sneeze. He's gonna have like a hat like this, you know. Is it like potatoes? Uh, there, are, there isn't some good schools nearby. But it's seven hundred <laughs> for like a two bedroom. I don't know. Every month. Every month. Seven hundred dollars every month. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Spoons, Sport. knives, and chopsticks. The four nations uh, lived peacefully <laughs> <laughs> until the fork nation. Until the four so it's called sporks, and like the spork is like the avatar. <laughs> cool guy walks away from explosion. Oh man. I'm gonna make these motion lines so it looks like he's walking. Oh. To give the illusion of walking. But he's not really walking guys, don't be fooled. It's art. Okay? It's actually all two dimensional. Doing that for Scott's benefit just because I remember uh, I was like, oh yeah, sunglasses is a sidestep and we're perfectly for that. Because <laughs> he has a signature on it and everything. And everyone's like, so wow, look at him. He's just, she's like walking away from him. what? And then the star is like away. an explosion and he's got some glasses. Is he walking? I, I don't, he's just, <laughs> he's a star, okay? I don't think he's the like sun with the sunglasses. Yeah, I'm, mm, the yeah, I'm the sun no, and I'm. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks more like. He looks more like that, you know, like the balloon poodle that, like, the, like a clown would you give you? Would you give him pants? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is going on here? That's his abs, okay? Those, <laughs> those are his sick abs. <laughs> Where's his arms? Oh. Where is his shirt? Where's his arms? Where's his... <laughs> 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 those are his two little... <laughs> 
He's got some sick ass in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that wasn't even So a hi, welcome to the 70s version uh, talk show of Dude I Just True. <laughs> just flaming objects and he's just like ah! <coughs> Stuart's not happy. Snowballs would probably be like ah! <laughs> What's the other uh, rat? Is that a rat next to him or is that a cat? It's a, oh, it's a cat. It's a cat. Wow, we're really going into detail with this one. Finding Bigfoot. <laughs> like Finding Nemo? No, as in Finding Bigfoot, like the TV show, but it could be anything. Why would Nemo have feet? Oh, Ew! Oh, ah! Oh, oh. I've got that image in my head, I can't get it out! <laughs> I don't know how to walk under the water, Dad. How does one do that? <laughs> oh my god. Keep it on there for a second. Big, big. There, there you go. <laughs> I will step up. I, I can't. Step up to the plate. I gotta, I gotta do uh, Bigfoot, finding Bigfoot. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's a shy guy, but. <laughs> but, but big. Those are some big feet. <laughs> I need medical attention. <laughs> <laughs> you get that for 30 years. <laughs> Find me. <laughs> it's so lonely. <laughs> Eating a horse. Hey, look at these guys, they're eating horses. <laughs> look at these guys. Look at them, they're having a nice dinner and they're eating a horse. They're, they're in jail for eating a horse. Too. Why? They're in jail as they're eating well, they're, horse? They're in death row and they decided just to be like, you know what, I'm going to double down on everyone hating me and we're going to just have a horse. <laughs> Bring me a horse. Oh, that's the mouth. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. no. <laughs> you see this? Well, it's We're off. a horse, okay? Like, <laughs> what else am I supposed to draw? What else? <laughs> Under desperation, the horse learned how to speak. <laughs> now hear me out. Don't eat me. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Now I know what you're thinking. You might be wondering how it got here. Hey, I'm just fat. Stop. Freeze frame. There's no nutrition here. So? That was another fun episode of Dude I Just Drew. I had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, a lot of goofs, <laughs> a lot of spooks. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. But we will see you on the next episode of Dude I Just Drew. Remember to follow us on the Dude I Just Drew Facebook, where we will be have the full live stream on there, and we will also have the full live stream on YouTube. Subscribe if you're on the YouTube channel. Yeah, if you want to, if you're on the YouTube channel, subscribe. Go check Press us out. Like helps. Yeah, dude, I just drew. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to. You know, I'm an artist. <laughs> and um, bubbles. and bubbles. But um, other than that, I uh, hope to see you guys in the next episode. So uh, see you later. Uh, Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about city council. Um, Woo. city. Um, there's a couple things happening with this city. Not much happening with this particular city meeting, but we're gonna kind of throw it in there just to kind of talk a little bit more about i'm uh, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm vamping while i get my notes ready uh let's talk about some um zero waste that the city proposed and one pe person public comment says hey city it's not enough so here is uh andy uh, hizzle and this is what she had to say about uh city's efforts what this means is that people of relative privilege and then among them only those whose value system aligns are the only people in a position to recycle or compost in this community in the grand scheme of things, that's very few folks. You really have to go out of your way to recycle and compost in this community. Not everyone is able to do that. You as city representatives can and must address this. You know that this is a serious issue and you have many resources at your disposal, including my tax dollars, to make it a reality. I read in the Miscellaneous today that Andy Holleran and his investors are planning to ask for $1.9 million in tax increment financing to clear the space on Patty and Main where he plans to put another multi-million dollar hotel. I have to ask what are the city's priorities? Another Marriott will come in and build in our city inviting mostly wealthy folks to come in and enjoy our town. Yay. Guess what? That Marriott will not be required to recycle. All right. So that's uh, uh, some of the complaints that she had to uh, say about some of the zero waste, that it's supposed to help uh, 
the people who are able to afford recycling rather than people who can't. So um, here's Atisha Romero who agrees that the city uh, needs to do more about preventing plastic bags and how to get businesses to get on board with this. There's two local businesses here that, well one focuses on compost, um, soil cycle, I think it is, um, but it may be if the city also takes priority in composting. Um, that's just, in, instead of throwing things in the landfill right away and using plastic bags to put that trash in there, to put it in a landfill, maybe we can um, think about composting. And again, there are people here in the city and local businesses that are willing probably to like step up with some help, the community, um, to make it happen. All right, so um, that was T.C. Romero. Um, the uh, inciting incident occurred uh, last month when a wind blew a lot of plastic bags over the landfill onto the highway, which many citizens want to help clean out the trash while dealing with three different boundary lines from City of Missoula, Montana Department of Transportation, and Republic Services. And, of course, when it came to recycling, there's only a lot that you can do yourself from Pacific Steel, Republic Services, Echo Compost, or Missoula Echo Compost, as they renamed it. Um, it's just one of those things. Uh, where do you go for recycling, Josh? Do you go to anywhere to recycle? Um, I don't have a lot to recycle. I don't make much waste, honestly. Yeah. I usually eat out. Um, but at the cafe where I work, we just started... Um, one of our customers actually offered to compost for us. So That's we, cool. we have a bucket now where we like throw coffee grounds and anything, old fruit and stuff, you know, that can be composted. And he just comes by daily, picks it up. And we do recycle. We have like plastic recycling yeah. bins that we've had forever. Because uh, Republic Services, for usually about $12 a month, they provide the. Uh, the yellow bin. It's just a, a trash bin with a yellow top, and you just throw a bunch of uh, mixed recycling yeah. in there, and they uh, deviate it. Yeah. Yep. That's just many, one of many ways that you can do it yourself. Um, a lot of times you have to uh, get up and at them and get the other people to do it. And a lot of people are proposing that they put a tax on folks. Um, Seattle has a fairly uh, interesting tax when it comes to people who don't recycle. So if the trash person finds like X amount of money, they have the right to fine you in Seattle. And that's might be some of the things that uh, City of Missoula might, me, might be considering yeah. to tax, to uh, fine people for I not think, recycling. I think it's good to encourage recycling. You know, I, I only yeah. found it's out an, about it, the it's whole good process to like a few years ago. It's good to encourage recycling, but it's, I don't think it's good to enforce recycling. Honestly, I think um, what would help the most with recycling is maybe some like government subsidies because if people are being charged like 12 bucks a month just to recycle stuff which should be a thing that everybody does yeah in general then i that's not very encouraging to recycle if you got to pay for it yeah and uh, the stigma between like plastic bags that are single use um plastic yeah. bags it's kind of like a, it, it's kind of like an oxymoron if you really think about it because it's it's made of plastic isn't there a way you can like a lot of times like melt a lot of that stuff down and reuse it yeah honestly it's not that difficult to process um but we just don't have the some uh, stores like, we don't have the uh, facilities or the uh, resources to uh facilitate uh those kind of recycling uh, materials like glass. Glass has been a big staple in Missoula that people have been like, what are we going to do with the glass? And there's just never never enough glass to recycle to justify the transportation of said glass to other places like yeah. Billings where it used to get sent. And you know, at the cafe, um, we only use paper stuff yeah. for like to-go orders and stuff. Um, and I think H&M in the mall just switched over from using plastic bags to using paper bags, which is kind of just an easier way to go about it if plastic is more difficult to recycle than Yeah. And I do notice that fine. one of the things that uh, Logjam Presents is doing now, you know, like they have the little plastic cups that they use for, you know, like their concerts at um, the 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 amphitheater over there. Yeah. They've ba basically switched over everything to uh, a paper-esque uh, composting plastic that allows it to decompose much easier. It's uh, the, the cups, I think I remember feeling those cups, and it's, it's like, you know, like some straws are uh, composting, they kind of feel a little different, even though yeah. they look plastic. That's kind of what they're uh, aiming towards for this next coming season, because last year the cleanup was a little bad. Oh, yeah. I, I worked there for a few shows, and uh, cleanup, 
Yeah, Looked but uh, like Nick Shakota, terrible. Nick Shakota claimed that he's going to start doing that, but also at the same time, since they just uh, uh, started doing the. Um, the uh, they they took over for the Osprey in terms of events, so mm, they're going to be okay. hosting events there, concerts and stuff there at the Osprey Field, and that's one of the places right. that they're going to be trying to do more of that uh, green friendly cups, you know, that's good. just like beer yeah. beer plastic cups, but yeah. they're not really Compostable plastic. Compostable cups are a good idea. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about something else. Um, we're talking about trees. Uh, so it was right. part of uh, Missoula Arbor's Day proclamation. Arbor Day is coming up. And part of Missoula's Arbor Day proclamation is Karen Sippy, Trees for Missoula, talks about urban forest um, and a reaction to the proclamation. So uh, here is Karen Sippy. A couple of ways that everyone can sure. help support our urban forest. One way is to either run and run for the trees this coming Saturday or volunteer for Run for the Trees. Um, you can become a volunteer with Trees for Missoula, and we do lots of great things. We plant trees and prune trees for the city. Uh, the funds that come from Run for the Trees directly purchase bare root trees for our city that Trees for Missoula volunteers plant every fall in our city. So thank you so much. We All right. So uh, not me again. Uh, sorry, I, it's just this whole new uh, sequences throwing me off like crazy. All right, so we have our uh, next quote, and it's World Landscape Architect recognizes ways to reduce blight and make places less urban on the on the outside. So here is uh, one of the quotes talking a little bit about how a landscape architect uh, basically influenced how we go to the Sun Road. So let's learn a little bit about uh, some history. Uh, we're small, but but mighty. Uh, many of you probably don't, didn't realize until you heard the proclamation or saw it in your agenda materials that the going to the Sun route was a vision of a landscape architect in 1924 uh, who uh, stood his ground against a road engineer who wanted to put 15 switchbacks up Logan Creek to reach Logan Pass. And fortunately, Stephen Mather, the first director of the National Park Service, a real character and charismatic entrepreneur, stormed off the mountain and, and muddled around for a couple of weeks with and conferring with his peers around the uh, superintendents of other parks around the country and they all realized yes it'll be expensive but it'll look so much better and those of you that travel that route will know if you're coming in from the west going along uh, mcdonald creek and you look up you can't see it the only time you see that road is if a uh, the sun reflects on a windshield and that was the vision of Tom Vint, who was uh, another Berkeley graduate, I'm glad to say, uh, who, who had the vision to make that happen. I also just want All right, so that's a little bit of a history lesson, but also to uh, uh, celebrate world landscape architecture. Um, it's just one of those things that kind of like uh, uh, limits blight, but also helps improve the areas in which we live in. All right, Mike Painter, he's a board at MCAT, but also has become the Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer of this year. So he's basically like the OG volunteer of the city of Missoula. Um, so here is uh, the city of Missoula honoring Mike Painter with this proclamation. I'll, I'll read the proclamation. Whereas the city of Missoula recognizes the signif significance of local volunteerism and dedicated neighborhood service, uh, now, therefore, I, Brian Von Lossberg, acting for John Angan, Mayor of the City of Missoula and the State of Montana, do hereby proclaim April 16th, 2019, in Missoula, Montana, as Mike Painter Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer Day, and honorably declare the month of April to be the Outstanding Neighborhood Volunteer Month, and urge all citizens to join in recognizing their profound connection to place and to each other by offering their service for the betterment of their own neighborhoods in challenging and meaningful new ways during this commemorative month month and beyond. I'd like to invite Mike up and present him with this plaque. Yeah, Mike Painter uh, got a plaque. It's a very beautiful plaque and this has uh, been an ongoing thing within the city of Missoula. Uh, there's Joel Bear taking a picture of uh, our very own Mike Painter. 
And I'm assuming you probably already saw this online as well on AIMCAT's Facebook page. And speaking of Facebook page, you can find out more information about us and these programs on MCAT by logging on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local resource for everything MCAT from your local access to uh, publicly made videos, educational videos, um, government videos. We are Peg Station. Um, we offer uh, animation uh, Saturdays, every Saturday from 1 to 5. We offer kids age 9 to 13 to do some stop animation videos or some live action. Basically, learn media. Um, but if you want to learn more information about your city council, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But one final plug, Wake Up Missoula. WakeUpMissoula.wixsite.com slash Wake Up Missoula. You can find us just by Googling Wake Up Missoula, and you can't miss us. It's that easy. All right, so that's pretty much it for that. I have another program for you. This is a this is part of our spring flicks. And, you know, it's a nice way to usher in the springtime with uh, our spring flicks camp. And we got a double dose of videos for you guys. So without further ado, here's this. And when we return, we're going to have some Josh playing some synthesizers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've been looking all over the place for one of these. This is beautiful. Um, aside from that little mark, um, <coughs> oh yeah, you're dead. Wait, dead? Crap! been a long one for the Axis. This was just the beginning. Give special thanks to my friend Scott and Neil 
and everyone for watching this video. Thank you, and I hope we see you around. Goodbye. Hey, take it away, Josh. Oh, okay. There you go. There's a little improv for you, Scott. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Are you ready for um, some events? Uh, no. Okay, me neither. All right, so let's try to get through this together. <laughs> this is like literally the lull of the show, so you can probably turn on right now if you're watching. But this is just some of the things that are happening here in the city of Missoula. If you're interested in some indoor fun for your kids, uh, Flying Squirrel, Mismo Gymnastics, Missoula Indoor Sports Training, and Roots Accurate Sports Center are a bunch of indoor fun places that you guys can check out for uh, most of the day. Most days during the week and so fun activities they also have like a homeschool uh, gymnastic groups at Roots Acre Sports Center I believe uh, or a bit of gymnastics have it I'm not sure um, Arts Associates of Missoula monthly meeting at 10 a.m. starting at Missoula Art Museum the Art Associates monthly meeting is held uh, today uh, it's education room at the Missoula Art Museum um, Barbara Lease of Missoula Bliss artwork will do a presentation on her concrete sculptings the meetings are open to the public for more information you can call them at the at, uh, Susan Rizzo at 549-0752 Tiny Tales is gonna be on power places which, which means it's gonna be at the Missoula food bank from 1030 to about 11 it's a good way to get engaged uh, with reading and kids and especially uh, speaking of engaged in learning hands-on science wildfire science you get to learn all about uh, the science of wildfires at the discovery bench at spectrum discovery center at their opening time at 11 a.m. Uh, Indian law week it's Indian law week and they're doing a speaker presentation of the uh, law school over by the university it's starting at noon today it's lunch speaker presentation hosted by Native American Law Student Association at UM's law school in conjunction with Indian Law Week Wednesday's presentation will be Dr. Martin Nye and will focus on envisioning co-management of the Badger 2 medicine the Impact Short Block, so the Roxy Theater, is the International Wildlife Film Festival going on this week. You can find out more by going to, I think it's IWFF.org, and you can uh, find out all these movies and times, but so far they're doing a short block, and these are some of the movies that are coming out, which is The Last Green Thread, and it's a three friends set out to on an expedition in the most rapidly developed landscape in Central Florida. Um, there's another movie called What Can Be Saved, Owl vs. Owl, uh, Sands of, Sand of Time, um, The Last Struggles of an Ant who, uh, Whose Time Seems to Be Coming to an End, Sides of a Horn, Africa's War on Poaching from Both Sides of the Fence, um, you know, like they have different boundary lines and people basically enticing animals to come out and then hunting them from there. Um, a Letter to Congress, The Importance of Wilderness is the Framework of a New Message, to Washington, D.C., uh, Sounds of Survival, Deep in the Emerald Forest of Cusco National Park of Honduras. Um, scientists are on the quest to record a never-before-heard never call of the endangered exequit 
spike thumb frog. So it's a new species, and they're going to be showing this during the International Wildlife Film Festival. These are just some of the examples of some of the short films that will be playing this afternoon, starting at 3 p.m. at the Roxy. Teen Artist Workshop. They do this for a lot of uh, kids. Um, if you're interested in art, and this is a free activity, and all materials and snacks are provided at the Missouri Art Museum. Um, most of the membership from the Missouri Art Museum money goes towards these programs and education, so you get to work with Gillian Kessler, local poet and teacher, to explore connections between poetry and art. They explore self-esteem, the power of voice, and how to creatively you can come into your power. And so that's what's going on there. Uh, it's a teen artist workshop at Missouri Art Museum right after school starting at 4 p.m. And it goes until about six, so. It's just, you know, it's poetry. It's just, you know, it's just, it's kind of like you break the norm. You, you try something new. It's just a good service for people. Room service, five short plays in hotel rooms. Uh, the the Conflux Brewing Company is doing a play. And this starts at 5.30 and also another showing at 7.30. And it's, uh... It's five world premiere short plays for small audiences. It's taking place in hotel rooms. Those preview performances are an opportunity for you and your first time test audiences, helping us get things right for opening night. And of course, they have limited discount tickets. It's $15 for a ticket. They're going to have a 6.30 show, and they're going to have an 8 p.m. show. And it's happening tonight. So those are most of your events that are happening for your Wednesday. I have a new art clip for you guys. I probably shouldn't have exited out of that. But it's an art clip from the, the Missouri Art Museum. Uh, it's really cool. Honestly, I'm really impressed with the new art, uh, the new art installation from the Missouri Art Museum. And let's check this out. go. So uh, some um, new installation at the Missouri Art Museum. This goes until about May 11th. So you might want to check the, all that stuff out. There's always more to the Art Museum than what Rick produces and puts on our channel. So you can totally check that out anytime. MCAT.org. All right. Let's finish up some events Thursday. There's not much going on here, but they're talking about the Landlords Association meeting. So if you're a landlord mm -hmm. or interested in being a landlord and meet and greeting, they're meeting at Perkins tomorrow at 1130. And they'll be talking about... Uh, Speakers will be uh, attorney Klaus Seit, who authored the book For Rent, and the talk will begin at 12-ish, and um, non-members are welcome. It's a good way to opportunity to meet and greet with other landlords and just kind of figure out their process and figuring out, you know, renters' rights and stuff like that. For some reason, Perkins just sounds like the perfect place for that. Right? I don't know what. I don't know. Perkins also has the Toastmasters meeting, so people who want to improve their... Uh, Public speaking mm, skills, Toastmasters, right. and they usually do that at six thirty yeah. in the morning. Yeah, it's just like if you had said like Denny's or something, I would have been like, really? Yeah. But Perkins sounds yeah. right. Yeah, they do have a conference room there. A lot of restaurants do have conference rooms, and most people just don't think about using some of those facilities. And it's usually relatively cheap, and plus, it's a good way just to get a meal. Wow, I'm just doing a commercial for Perkins. Don't go to Perkins. Anyways, <laughs> Indian Law Week speaker presentation, University of Montana uh, Law School building. Uh, starting at noon tomorrow, they're doing a, a, a continuation of Indian Law Week. And Thursday's presentation will be Michelle Mitchell, and will focus on American Indian education in Montana. Art Club Meetup. 
Missoula Art Museum is uh, they do this on Thursdays at lunch. Um, it's a 30 minute mini tours and 30 minute lunch, con lunch conversations, and they're doing it uh, today. And I and I believe it's their last um, art club lunch meetup for the season. They're not gonna, they haven't really advertised anything else further on, so you might want to get a chance to check this out. Last time, dialogue innovative ways to use video online. Roxy Theater is doing it innovative ways to use video online, and starts at 1 p.m. The Roxy. There are more options for good storytelling that reach far beyond posting your film online and collecting views. Think creatively in repurposing your film post-festival run, help an organization highlight a multifaceted issue or submit a, to a digital magazine. Consider reaching out to partners, breaking your media, uh, breaking up your media, or working across genres with journalists, photographers, and nonprofits. It's a good, good way to meet with other people, but also trying to get your name out there and just kind of sell your brand, bro. It's just basically your video brand. You just got to figure out how you do it and kind of continue on doing it because you know you can make a program you can be the best program in the world but no one's going to care if nobody knows how to find it or nobody knows if nobody knows anything about it i mean if you have a really good concept it's like oh that's a really cool concept you know you have to really push for it you got to be like here's excerpts here's little bits and pieces and stuff like that that's what i've really liked about you know do they just true you yeah. know like graham's been doing a good job with doing a, a lot of those highlights and i've been kind of even condensing a lot of the highlights that he's already made just to kind of give a highlight of the highlights just to run on my show. Because the highlights are so good that they need yeah, highlights. He, yeah, he's a, he's a really good editor. He really oh, knows definitely. how to just kind of have that kind of uh, sporadic YouTube vibe to it yeah. as well. With, with the tools he's using, it's really impressive. Yeah, and so far, like, uh, our last, uh, the, the Tom Nielsen one, your friend Tom, Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one had, uh, just through Facebook alone, it had a 1,000 views awesome right yeah that was a good episode it was a really solid episode the last episode that we did on saturday with will um i thought it was pretty good too i mean they had bubbles i think nice. the, it's each episode has this like really big yeah. theme but i really like it because it doesn't have a tendency to kind of like it kind of sometimes uh harks back to some of the older episodes but not too much it really kind of creates its own kind of uh com comedic value to it as well yeah there's a lot I of good you. parts in it like uh uh finding bigfoot we kind of like uh, rolled with that. It basically kind of made it a Finding Nemo kind of Bigfoot. Yeah. And then just gave Nemo giant feet, as you saw from that um, picture that Graham kind of um, superimposed together. Yeah, that, that was good. That was pretty good. That was pretty it, was, good. it was also really haunting, too. A little bit. Yeah. Also happening for your Thursday afternoon, if you're interested in doing arts and crafts, uh, Big Sky High School, Big Sky Branch is Make It and Take It Crafts. Big Sky High School does do this after school every Thursday around 2.30 and just make your own crap and you get to do stuff. I don't know why I said crap, but whatever. <laughs> stuff. Bug make mansions. Stuff. Hey, bugs need mansions too. Want to little things out? Join us to learn about how to create nesting sites and housing for insect friends. Uh, this is going to be at Missoula Insectarium. You're going to go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. Uh, this is bug shelters of natural materials and recyclables. And chat in about the steps that you'll need to take to ensure your garden is abuzz with activity. They also have a predator feeding at 4 p.m. most days, so you get to see which hungry predator is hungry today. And that's basically all I had to say. Not, not much really going on with events. Um, a lot of good events, uh, educational events. I usually don't talk about the yoga because that's like a, that's like a dime a dozen when it comes to Missoula events. It's sure. like everybody does yoga. Goat yoga seems to be the new thing nowadays that people really like. Weird, but okay. Yeah, did you, have you heard about goat yoga? I can imagine what it is, but like... It's, I, it, it's, it's exactly what you think it is. It's yoga with goats. It's yoga with goats. And I, I think it's like the, the goats are just kind of standing around. Maybe they walk on your back. But you can't really tell goat what I to do. I prefer the idea of just like hot house yoga. That that seems like the most efficient kind. And they ask you, like, you're not supposed to like eat or anything. You're supposed to have like a whole bunch of water before you go on, and you're not allowed to leave the room. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> as far as yoga goes, just like go to the hip strip. We got like what, like two to five different yoga houses yeah. there. And there's o always like yoga. like pretty much streets. every girl I went to high school with it does yoga classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, probably in the same boat. Yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah, but some yoga. I mean, I just want to give another shout out to the International Wildlife Film Festival. It's their 42nd year of doing uh, the festival, so it's very um, numerically uh, pleasing. <laughs> oh, hey, you know, if you're ever looking for some, like, underground stuff, um, check out the posters outside of Wave and Circuit. Sometimes they're, like, hosting events that 
aren't even on the like Missoula events webpage. Oh yeah, but there's a lot more events. Like, um, not many people know about that place. Well, a lot of events. Like, if you really want to kind of be in the know, a lot of people post on Facebook. A lot of Facebook events oh, like do yeah. not post. It's mm-hmm. like there's so many events on Facebook that I just get like pop, 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 tip going mm-hmm. on there, and it's like, how do you know all this stuff? It's like it's just. You know, like, if you have Facebook and you subscribe to a lot of places here in town, they will tell you about all their events. Like, Free Cycles is another one of those kind of, like, underground places that they do. Sure, they promote on MissoulaEvents.net, but they also have a lot of concerts and venues that they do there in their uh, Free Cycles facility. Yeah, and Wave and Circuit was pretty underground because I didn't even realize that it existed until I literally just, like, stumbled upon their doorway, like, some Platform 9 and 3 quarter stuff. And I just, like, walked in and they just have, like, everything that I... What I like there, you know, like synthesizers, studio, you know, yeah. musical events. But also, you what know, Zach it? has uh, d- uh, underground venues as well. You yeah. know, they, they host underground venues. Uh, the Union Hall is becoming pretty big. Uh, Community Radio is doing, uh, usually rents out the hall upstairs. It has a little theater right next door to that hall, Union mm-hmm. Hall, and they use that as like a concert venue. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's Those pretty much it. Uh, there's... Really not much else to say about this morning show. I don't know. We're going to be doing some Flagship Friday on Friday. We have another. Uh, this is basically kind of like the last production week for any kind of films for a lot of the Flagship kids. Next week, it's basically we're going to premiere all the videos that the kids have made. I've been pretty working pretty hectic on a lot of those videos. I mean, yeah. there's only been like maybe a, a handful of videos that I'm just like looked at. And I'm just like... I'm not editing this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, there's that's the, understandable. And I, I've made it clear to a lot of kids, it's like, if your story is not clear, then you can kiss my rear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, may, maybe we'll do some scripting. Yeah, what for sure. There's, 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 there's a couple schools that... Uh, that need that spend that extra time to do some pre-production stuff yeah. it's because pre-production is just as important as the oh, actual yeah. filming because if you don't if you go into it without a plan a lot of kids have that whole kind of idea of like yeah, improv you can, filmmaking you can't and, make a and it really without is a script it's it, i've done it before and there's a lot of groups that get used to it improv filming it's, it's it really improves your chops and sure, a lot yeah. of times you have a lot of good moments in films that you really like but then there's a lot of movies that are just like just completely just like where are you going with this yeah and that's what i try to do i'm like that's that's some of my after school program it's more just like boom be creative it's like you put people on the spot creatively and i think that's a good way to get people to get their yeah. juices flowing and it's it's I the did. concept of being bored you know like the, the importance of being bored is to kind of come up with things that can entertain yourself that doesn't involve staring at your phone all the time i did a lot of improv videos uh in high school like because i had like uh, pretty short deadlines, so me and some friends would just like go film a comedy sketch under the bridge, come up with stuff as we went along. Yeah, and uh, Balling on a Budget was one of my favorite videos that you guys made. Yeah, that's the only one that we like slightly planned out in that we made a song and then we just went to Walmart. Yeah, honestly, Christmas music song. videos are very solid. There's, oh, yeah. It's like you, once you have like a good song or like something that you can find and you just kind of like throw it together. I wouldn't say it was a good song. It was a song. I thought it was a good song. (laughs) Thanks. Yeah. Theodore's verses were a little rough, but like... (laughs) Wow. And yours were amazing? They were not amazing, but they were less rough. (laughs) And Theo will admit that to you. Yeah. There's been a couple videos that I've seen in the past where, um, you know, like, it's it's overall, like, the biggest... uh, the, The biggest thing that I always notice is that it's just the audio quality. Yeah. And, like, filming in a gym. Filming in a gym. That's that's never film oh, in a gym ever. Yeah. I don't know why people film in a gym because it's just awful. So many people in my class did that, and I was just like, guys, that's it's the just the audio quality in my TV class, like all across the board, was just real garbage. My my favorite parts of uh, a lot of uh, videos is when I'm looking through the video and they're just talking. And it's like, well, I just have to get to the other side. It's yeah, and just like you hear the vacuum in the background, it's like. Could you like redo the scene? Like, yeah. And I, I try to remind him, it's like, like there are going to be people who are getting your shot. We have the film. A lot of times, it's like real filmmaking. We have the film around fun, the peoples. I, I usually get a few takes yeah. just for fun, also because uh, we always end up laughing yeah. if we're doing improv. Yeah, I mean, like honestly, like there's been movies like this year um, with one of my schools is that we're uh, taking like an extreme, like professional approach to it. So yeah. we're like able to like um, come up with a, a concept. We have an outline. 
I mean, I kind of have them kind of make up their own lines to it because the whole scripting process would have taken so much longer, and I didn't want to have too much. Uh, I wanted them to kind of ad lib through it, but the whole yeah. concept is like it's a new girl in school, and she's very depressed. But you know, like there's a lot of like red flags True. of showing how like True. problems she has. I mean, I really hope that this kind of comes off as like a serious movie, and because mm-hmm. that's the kids what I want to do. They wanted to make like a serious movie. I'm just like, yeah, let's make it's this serious movie. Rare, honestly, it is really extremely rare. Yeah, it's not very often that kids want to make like a, a drama. Yeah. It's it, it was like wow this is kind of crazy but of yeah. course there's funny moments like like a great movie is is kind of genre blending it's like it's not mm-hmm. a comedy it's also a drama but they also have like uh, they they have very poignant moments poignant 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 yeah. poignant yeah words but yeah it's just one of the things to kind of think about you yeah. know when you're making a film it's like do you want people to care about your film you know a movie that had great drama and comedy mixed in to one and adventure and action. Spider Verse. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say Spider Verse because that definitely uh, blends that, me. That was. Really yeah, that was a lot more heart wrenching yeah. than Thor because Thor Ragnarok wasn't really the heart wrenching. It was kind of like your whole your whole town blew up, and yeah. then he kind of makes it kind of like a, a last minute crack at the fact that uh, spoiler that his whole uh, way of life in the world that's existed for h- hundreds of thousands of years is gone. Odin like passing away though that was like a pretty dramatic scene and yeah. it was really well done. I think it's really changed when Thor got that haircut pretty much. Like oh, everything basically turned haircut. into like a straight up comedy after that. Yeah. Even a lot of like the moments where you like killed all the characters and everything got like wow this got kind of dark. It yeah. started getting a lot funnier. Like he didn't really care about what Hela was doing. Yeah. It's it like was, she was it there. It's so like oh there she is again. Here's another scene. Can we get back to the Thor on just the uh, just the Jeff Goldblum parts were my favorite though. I got to say Jeff Goldblum is an idol of mine, you know? Yeah. Um, mo- uh, there were actually a lot of improvised scenes in that. Oh, movie. yeah. Um, with Mark Ruffalo and... Um, well, apparently... Um, I feel like Jeff Goldblum was just improvising the whole apparently, time. Apparently, um, there was a, a, a kid um, a kid who uh, was basically uh, had a terminal illness. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. He, he mentioned that they should be like, oh, he's a friend from work. Yeah, And that yeah. made it into the movie, and I thought that was a really a very awesome story that, that they told about. That was a great it. line, too. Like, that's such a creative line. He's a friend from work. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like the Hulk, and they're about to fight. He's, he's a friend from work. Yeah. It's a nice callback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the morning show. Do you want to take us off? We have about a minute yeah, left, yeah. so take uh, it away, Josh. I'm going to play some of my Wolfpack tunes. So. Yeah.